Hey, Happy New Year, welcome back to my channel. This video is gonna be kind of a two-parter. Um, I had sort of filmed a little bit of like vloggy type stuff for my Christmas video, but then I kind of just wanted to have Christmas. <laughs> I was really enjoying spending time with my family and taking a little bit of a break. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna, the first part of the video is gonna be like a little year recap. And then the second part of the video is going to be talking about what you can sew to make yourself a better sewer. So if you're not into the vloggy chit chat stuff and you just want to skip right to the sewing, I'm totally cool with that. I will timestamp below when the sewing chat starts. Okay, so let's get going. Okay, so for me, every year, no matter how stressful, how tough the year is, I generally try to look back with, you know, looking at my highlights, looking at my silver linings, looking at my blessings that I've gotten all year. Um, I'm not one to want to, like, be angry at an entire year for happening. And even I have to admit that 2020 was a bit of a dumpster fire. <laughs> um, and that said, my family is so incredibly blessed and privileged and fortunate. We had, you know, help. We had so much help this year just to kind of keep the boat from sinking, <laughs> which it, at times it was hard. Um, and so in, in saying that, I know that when we did find times to sort of take more time with the family and find those little pockets of joy, um, I really hope that all of you were able to do that too. I know for some folks that was a really tall order this year. So yeah, I'm going to share my highlights of the year with you and I really hope that you're, you were able to, to find some silver linings yourself. Now for a lot of the year, especially like when we have had parts of the year where we're homeschooling, um, I have way less time on my hands. All that social media stuff about like, if you're not coming out of lockdown without a new skill or a new business or learning a new language, like what are you even doing? Um, I'm surviving. <laughs> I, I, I just, I kind of understand where those posts are coming from, but also like people just are trying to get by. Let's not put any more pressure on folks than they need, okay? So as far as like our holiday season goes, I actually, like, I didn't decorate as much, I didn't do as much baking, we didn't do as much, like, stuff. Um, and that wasn't even because, oh, well, we can't be around people, we're not gonna do it. It was just, I, there was no time. There just was no time. We did still get, like, some traditions and stuff done um, this Christmas. And, um, but where this year really had the most silver linings for me was in the summer. In the summer, we got to spend so much time as a family. My husband usually, um, because he was working in construction, summer, you know, the kids don't see him and it's such a struggle to kind of get out and have adventures. And this year we were able to do that so much. We were actually able to get out into the mountains. And that's something that we really have trouble with most years, but it's somewhere where we absolutely love to go and where we, f we need to be. It's where our heart is as a family, I feel like. We did tons of hiking. Oh, thanks, babe. We went looking for ghost towns and even found a couple. We did tons of foraging and canning, which we do a bit every year, but we were able to do way more this year. We got to work on some new skills. And we got to try many new things. took some big road trips to find some big things. And got very, very sleepy in the process. And even though we couldn't go trick-or-treating the way that we know trick-or-treating, we managed to find a really cool way to spend our Halloween. Hey! 
One last clue is all you have to claim your treasure the chest. It's near the place. Here. It's near the place where marshmallows are cooked. They're very best. Where do we cook marshmallows? At the fire pit. At the fire pit? All right, let's go look at the fire. This year, instead of dragging the plastic trees up from the basement, we actually drove out to the forest to find trees to cut down. We had a snowy picnic and the day was perfect. I have zero footage of my husband cutting down our Christmas trees because I was in charge of making sure that the kids didn't play with axes and saws and get hit by falling trees, so good job, Mom. to get those holiday traditions in that we really love, even though we had to do it a little bit different in order to be together. different way to cope with this year and ways to find joy hopefully and what has absolutely thrilled me is that I've had so many people commenting or messaging me and just telling me that they are starting sewing for the first time or they haven't sewn in years and years and they're finally picking it back up some people like more than one person told me that they got a sewing machine for Christmas like three years ago and it's never been out of the box and you know stories like that so I'm thrilled that people are you know able to eke out some time in this mad crazy year to be able to do some sewing and so this video the second half is really about what projects can you do that are just gonna up that sewing game really fast? And in a lot of times you can actually, there's one project that I would recommend that is like my gold standard go-to if you want sewing skills, you need to sew yourself this one thing. And we're gonna get to that in a second because I have two honorable mentions that I wanna go through first. Before I get started, I want you to know that all of the like things that you're gonna see popping up here for inspiration and for how to's and whatnot, um, I put them all on a Pinterest board. And so I've linked the Pinterest board below so you don't have to worry about like screenshotting or taking notes or whatever. It's just all there. Okay, so the first honorable mention. Um, if you are just getting used to um, using a rotary cutter and a cutting mat and a ruler to cut fabric before you go jumping into a quilt or, or something big like that. Give yourself some time that just requires a ton of cutting and not having to necessarily line a whole bunch of one thing up. So your uh, reusable makeup remover pads, your pot holders, your bowl cozies for in the microwave, stuff like that. Um, those are gonna be things that you can just really get used to the feel of your rotary cutter. A rotary cutter doesn't feel, doesn't seem like something that should be overly complicated. And it, I mean, it's not, but it, it sometimes is trickier than it seems like it has a right to be. <laughs> so give yourself a project or two to really get used to using that rotary cutter if you haven't used one already. Um, as things, as you get more comfortable with it, you'll be able to be more comfortable around curved lines. It's still something that I'm working on, but eventually just being able to throw some pattern weights down on something and cut with your rotary cutter, you'll be so happy that you took some time to learn how to use it really well, I promise. The other honorable mention is um, 
sewing an apron. Now, if you're going on a journey to sew your own wardrobe like I have been doing, having an apron is a really good thing because, you know, if you're cooking something and you splash oil or sauce or whatever on a shirt that you got, you know, out of the bargain bin at Old Navy, oh well, there goes three bucks. But when you've taken time to sew something, you spent money on like decent fabric, um, then suddenly you care a little bit more about whether or not your clothes survive your kitchen. On top of that, why I think an apron is a great first garment to sew is because you're going to work on top stitching, you're going to work on edge stitching for your straps and your ties, which if you've never done edge stitching before, maybe that means you're going to be trying a different foot on your sewing machine than you've ever used before. Um, and so there are, you know, you, you're making a garment, but you're making a garment with the most flexibility of any garment you'll ever make. So you don't really have to worry about fitting. And that, to me, is the most important thing when you're learning how to sew. To me, there's sort of like two main um, skill camps when it comes to learning how to sew. Your one is like your technical skill, so that's reading a pattern, um, <clears throat> how to use your machine, how to tie off threads, how to change your sewing machine feet, how to top stitch, how to edge stitch, how to add piping. Like all of those technical skills are kind of on one side of the spectrum and fitting garments is on the other side. Now obviously that side doesn't apply if, if you're sewing quilts, but if you do want to get into wardrobe sewing, I recommend having a solid set of your core technical skills sort of in your toolbox, ready to go before you start taking on fitting. That's, that's how I did it. That's how I recommend other people do it. And so my number one all time, this will make you a better sewer in one project is to sew a bag. And I'm not really talking about like totes or clutches or anything like that, which I mean, if you want to take a baby step there, if you're a very brand new sewer, sure, sew one of those first. But what I'm talking about is I'm talking about a diaper bag, a purse, a gym bag with pockets, or like a craft caddy organizing type of a bag. Um, I'm talking about something that has pockets, that has fasteners, that has linings, because all of these things are things that you are going to be using in wardrobe sewing or using in any sewing. And this is where you're going to have the craziest concentration and mix of skills in one project that you can't help but become a better sewer. So just to name a few skills, what could you potentially be working on if you are sewing a bag like the ones that I described? Well, first of all, you're going to have to get really cozy with using interfacings because you're going to need to stiffen a lot of the fabrics that you might want to use. Or you're going to be using fabrics like leather or faux leather, which are thicker and have kind of like their own tricks to sewing. You're going to be doing a ton of top stitching. You're going to be doing a ton of edge stitching on straps. Both of those are going to be used not just for design and for holding it to the whole thing together, but it's going to be used for adding extra strength in places. So you're going to have to sort of get that, that thinking cap on for how do I reinforce things? How do I make things stronger? Um, and that can be really helpful when you're sewing garments as well. If say you have, maybe your knees always blow out on your, your jeans or something like that. And so then you can start to think your way around that because you've already had to do that when you sew a bag. You might have to use piping, bias trim, all of the fasteners. I mean, most bags have a zipper somewhere on them, um, not to mention pockets that, that don't have fasteners or a pocket that has like a strap over top of it with some kind of buckle or snap or button or something. You're gonna look at using D-rings and, and potentially, oh, I'm blanking, what are those things called? Rivets, <laughs> the little metal stud things that hold stuff together. Um, you're also going to potentially have to line something. And maybe that lining has a pocket or a zipper in it as well. You just have to do all of the things with a bag so you can't help but get better at, at sewing. So as I mentioned, all of the ideas and more that I showed up here are on a Pinterest list. You can follow that link down below. And um, yeah, if 2020, no, not 2020, we're done with 2020. So 2021 is the year that you want to become a better sewer. I highly, highly recommend that you go ahead and sew a bag, any kind of bag. And you know what, if you're like, okay, great Steph, but I just will not use it. Just make it a gift for someone. 
Okay, so there you have it. That is my year <laughs> recap and my number one project that you can sew to make yourself a better sewer this year. Um, so just give it a try and let me know how it goes. If you follow me on Instagram, make sure that you tag me. I've linked my Instagram below. Make sure you tag me so I can see that you've sewn a bag and give you some love over on the gram. I hope 2021 is a fantastic year for you. I hope that you're starting it off well and healthy with your loved ones around you. And that's all I have for you this week. So I will see you next week. Bye-bye.